Sounds good. We'll get officially started now since we have quorum as of this moment, and it is six fifteen. Um, so I will call. Um, I will call this meeting to order as we on time have a quorum. Um, any announcements you want to make on your side? Okay. Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. I think we are waiting for our 14th member to be uh, officially approved by council. So we're hoping to get that 14th member started by um, next month, next August meeting. Okay, that sounds good. All right, um, so approval of minutes. Uh, we needed to go back and approve May's minutes because they had, well, I guess they have been sent out, but not enough of us felt we had gone through them. Uh, we did receive one um, correction via email this afternoon um, via um, Michael McCorkle. Um, he was saying that, I'm going to read it just to be, um, in his email, the May 24th minutes are, in, are inaccurate. Item B4 should reflect the majority vote taken affirming the April 26th majority vote to use the SIB 2023 budget to establish and fund a full-time sustainability coordinator position. Elizabeth went back through the, um, the video um, to confirm whether or not we had taken another vote um, in May and we didn't, we didn't. Um, so I, I think that the notes stand, but wanted to you open that up to comment and other interpretation from your notes, your recollections or the video. How many people were at that meeting? Did you note that when you watched mm -hmm. it? No, I know we had quorum for sure. I just wasn't sure. I didn't count how many people. We well, had. if there's no quorum, then any vote we took wasn't. Yeah, accepted. we did. We have can't a quorum. accept it. We did not have a quorum. We did. We did have mm -hmm. a quorum. So we all need to watch it. So I watched it this yeah. afternoon before I sent that email. I didn't see any voting. I sent the link out if anyone wants to confirm that. I'm yeah. the one who did the minutes. I totally could have made a mistake, which is why I went back and watched it. There was no official vote. No one raised their hand. No one called for a motion. Okay. Um, that was what I saw. Anyone is free yeah. to, I guess, look at that and tell me otherwise and everything. Or if anyone has any other maybe issues with the minutes, I'd be happy to take a look at them again. Any questions, comments? Okay, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put a motion to approve the minutes as they stand. Um, okay, second. For May or June or both? Um, for right now, I'm just doing May okay. because of the question around it. Um, so I'm going to open to, okay, so I got the second. Um, all those in favor of approving the May minutes, say aye. 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 Okay, um, <laughs> those who opposed, same sign. Okay. Um, so the May minutes pass. Um, Secondly, June uh, minutes, has everyone had a chance to review those? Anyone have any any changes? I didn't write anything when I was reading it, so that's okay. okay. Um, so I am gonna set in motion to approve the um, June minutes. Okay, I'll second. Second. Um, all those in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Um, those, anybody opposed, same sign. June minutes pass. Okay. Okay. Um, so discussion of next items. Uh, the big conversation today is the energy efficiency and conservation block grant program um, recommendations. Um, she's going to give a quick presentation, just kind of refresh our memory on the options and whatnot. And then I know that Lauren has a couple of ideas um, that she has emailed. Um, and then for anybody else who wants to present ideas or, or comment, we'll have a good discussion on this. Okay, before, so does anyone want a copy of the outline I sent? I'm just basically going to kind of go over this I'll in my presentation. Yeah. All right, so as you may kind of know, the purpose of the ECBG program is to have eligible have eligible state and local entities um, to implement strategies to reduce fossil fuel emissions, reduce total energy use, improve energy efficiency, build a clean and equitable energy economy. This does include to kind of try and incorporate that Justice 40 initiative. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the blueprints. Um, this is kind of like that website that we sent here that 
PDF that we sent to you guys. So there's different things on there and I'm gonna break that down a little further to different categories. So the first one is energy planning. This is long-term roadmap towards a defined energy vision. So all EECBG program award recipients are required to develop an energy efficient conservation strategy. This will include us needing access to building energy consumption and vehicle fuel and travel distance, utility bills, gas, diesel purchases, miles traveled, input and buy-in from key personnel. This includes strategic planning, stakeholder engagement, energy data um, and collection, develop a vision, write and adopt, publicize a plan. As you guys can see, it's pretty extensive um, in order to do energy planning. So we do need to account to that when we're talking about maybe what projects we need to do. We need to make sure we still leave enough aside to be able to um, do this. Mm -hmm. Uh, next is uh, efficient building. So this includes energy audits and building updates, energy saving performance contracts, building electrification, building performance standards, and stretch codes. I do want to point out that Sedwick County and Butler County both are also receiving an EECBG grant, but there is a significantly smaller, I want to say both are under $80,000. I reached out to Sedwick County and they're using theirs to, if I remember correctly, change kind of light bulbs to be more energy efficient within their buildings, just because that's kind of all they're um, able to do with their funds. Finally. 300,000? 380. 380,000. A little okay. over um, 381,000. Okay. So 300,000 more than them, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because one of those is to kind of, one of the, as I was reading what needs to be done in order to, besides project recommendations, one of the things that we need to do is contact other people around us to see if there's any room for collaboration, mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. theirs is smaller. And I'm still reaching out to Butler and waiting for them to kind of give me a call back to see what they're working on. Again, it's smaller, so they'll probably do something on their own as well, just to see if there was any room for collaboration or if they're making sure there was no overlap in our projects. Yep. Um, then renewables. So under renewables, we have like solar and storage, community solar, solarized campaign, renewable resource planning. Um, so I know this last meeting or two meetings ago, maybe there was a lot of talk about solar. So these are um, different places where the projects might be able to fit if you are looking at solar. Mm -hmm. um, and then our electric transportation, we have electric vehicles and fleet electrification and community charging. Yeah, that's a big one is community charging. Yeah. I feel like with electric vehicles in terms of the, the city, because we already have a lot of electric buses, mm -hmm. but making sure that there are charging stations to be able to handle EV adoption is going to be mm -hmm. important. Is that part of the multimodal center over by the Riverfront Stadium? I think I heard that there was going to be some. There, there they will. going to be some electric vehicle like, charging stations. Right. That's already mm -hmm. been budgeted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mike's got that, and he's got that way under control. Mike, yeah. Mike, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other spots, though, that would be really beneficial. And if it's possible mm -hmm. to give money to like um, apartment complexes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people, I know one person who lived in an apartment had run a a line out his window mm -hmm. to charge all night long yeah. on, a, on a 110. And of course it took all night sure. driving his EV. So it'd be nice to have at least one charging station. It's a lot of the apartment mm -hmm. complexes. Um, and I don't know, I mean, you can't yeah. force them to do that, but maybe offering an incentive to do mm -hmm. it for them to do that. That would be an interesting. That is, I'm just saying, that is really hard to do after the fact. If you're building a new apartment, putting an EV charging, is easier is, a, is much easier when you sure. try to do that as a retrofit it really becomes really difficult what about an area that's maybe high in apartment complexes but not actually in the apartment complex i'm thinking about um woodlawn and 37th street like that dylan's for example like there's a whole bunch of apartments kind of surrounding it so if you had have some at dylan's yeah yeah i mean well, i mean town east was already built and they've got like four chargers out there. Yeah, and they they're partnered with, with private companies, right? right. Yeah. yeah, but you right. could do that. It's right. not like I mean, they have yeah. to be. I'm wondering so if something like that could be an interesting piece of this because it's if we want to incentivize people to get more EVs over time, having that infrastructure in, in the city is going to be really important. I yeah. feel like Dylan's that could be a really interesting partnership. If it's not Dylan's, it's Kroger's. But Kroger, but, yeah, but Kroger. same. I mean, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. except it's a much more national company, but right. Yeah. But it would but, be for yeah, the apartment dwellers to charge overnight and walk home. Yeah. Or something. Or something. Well, I mean, anyone, unless, it was a, but, unless it was a fast charge, which you can't do on a consistent basis. Yeah. But um, because what I'm trying to do is get apartment dwellers to be able to buy EVs 
And they, there are a lot of really nice apartments and lofts. Yeah. You know, where people will have some money sure. to spend and get that $7,200 back or 4000 back. Um, mm -hmm. That's a great incentive to, to it. buy it. Mm -hmm. But if you can't charge, right, then it's, you're not going to get it. Right. So that's why some of this, if there's a way to do it, yeah. I know that mine, my charger now is on the side of my house and it just took some wiring mm -hmm. to go through to the electrical box. Yeah, so it wasn't, I mean, energy is difficult. a rebate. If it's your home, we actually offer rebates now. That I got it already. already. <laughs> right. They just, they just cover the wiring. They don't, right. you know, they cover the work to get it done. Get it so. done. But I'm also right. going to get money back on my taxes right. for that From too. The federal. It's part yeah. of the IRA. Yeah. So apartment complexes maybe could do something that way, put mm -hmm. it on the side of a building mm -hmm. and just run it. You know, that might be a, a one it's, possibility. Right. It's all instead what, of doing a thing. Wants to that, who's going to cover the cost of the charging? Mm -hmm. You know, do they want to absorb that within the, their own within the rent with or? their own rent, with their own uh, common space metering? You know, if you're, you know, otherwise you could go with Clean Charge Network or Electrify America where they they put they put it commercial in right right, ones right. In. how does yeah. the commercial one work i don't i don't you, know you, you pay, pay. You, just you set up a credit card, card. You yeah pay. you just set up an account like how does it would, compare to like i fill up my car with gas it's i mean it, again fast chargers you don't want to do all the time because you're going to pay more for a fast sure. charger yeah. and it also wears out your battery mm -hmm. so it's not good for the ev battery it's not good for the ev batteries to do it consistently, consistently. we had to do that for a couple of months until we got our charger put in okay and um, then it's we just went to town east yeah. And they had a deal with our manufacturer of our car for 30 minutes free. So we ended up paying very little. Mm -hmm. It's 30 cents a kilowatt hour, 37 cents a kilowatt hour with um, electric. How much is it for a car? It's going up now. Um, like how many kilowatt hours in your car? How many kilowatt hours? I'm trying to remember what we ended up. We ended up paying like $12. That's so much better. <laughs> I have, anyway, I have a hybrid now and it's, anyway, it's still, it's better than it, but it's not that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, you know, maybe looking into different options about, you know, either four apartments in apartment complexes. And I'm kind of thinking that maybe the commercial side mm -hmm. would probably make the most sense, but I, I don't know. That's, well, that's, that's to have a conversations, right? With yeah. apartment complexes. But it's not that expensive no. to do. And if you're parked there all night, it wouldn't necessarily have to be a fast charge. Right. But it could be like a level two, which should charge you up over seven or eight hours. Yeah. While you're sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could do something along a cap like we did with the, um, like they do with the water rebates. Mm -hmm. You know, we have this much money, whoever first come first serve, like whoever gets right. to it first. Right. Those are the apartment complexes they get it this year. Yeah. A lot of apartment complexes have reserved parking. And if they basically, you could buy a regular parking space or you could buy one with a slow charger. And just they add it onto your rent every month. Your parking is a separate item, but it's part of your rent for those particular spots. And if if you had an electric vehicle or wanted one, you just purchase one of those. But that way, it would be reserved, and somebody else wouldn't be sitting there, mm -hmm. you know, Ford Mustang from 1985 in it or something, just because it was a spot. I would I personally, I'm thinking, you know, I like the idea of the apartment complexes, but also incentivizing the population as a whole too. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, well, maybe a combination of both apartment complexes and chargers. Chargers, yeah. Yeah, most people don't charge at home. Okay. I mean, basically, people mostly charge at home. I guess if that makes you, sense. If you live in Wichita, or working in Wichita, you don't need to really charge when you get that's true some place because you're doing it at home. Because you okay. do it at home, but the home is the problem. Okay. Especially if you live in an apartment. I gotcha. I'm following. So that's why I'm thinking that way. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm with you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm. Maybe this is already happening, but what about fleet vehicles? Like, I mean, do they do taxis anymore, or is it all Uber? Or they exist? Or like, you know, the Amazon <laughs> trucks and the post office. I mean, are, are all those being the post office? A lot of work is... with ever do with electrification and fleets, mm -hmm. and we're working. Yeah, we we're doing a pilot project with a school on some electric buses through grants and and okay, what that they've done. So yeah. there is a big push for electrification with regards to fleets. Right. It's, but and there's it, a lot a of tax money involved in that, too, right? But the you know the, the cost of that initial investment of that those electric fleet vehicles yeah. is really large. <laughs> so that's that's a barrier today. Um, but yeah, I know as a company we are working. We have a whole one dedicated team that's just working on fleet electrification. Yeah, 
Um, I'm thinking also smaller fleets, just like, you know, like Dylan's florist is one. Yeah, that, that was yeah. the Dylan's florist, florist trucks, right? Yeah. Vehicle or the yeah. Um, construction companies that are, yeah. you know, the plumber who's out driving around all day long. The, yeah. Parts people from, uh, yeah. the, the, you know, that's yeah. what I think about the people that come in our shops delivering parts from the, the local mm -hmm. parts places. I mean, how the far Walmart delivery vans say electric on them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do. Mm -hmm. I've Some never seen one. <laughs> As can. I'm sitting there waiting on my pickup, it's parked there. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've never seen one. Oh. I mean, if we if we suggested that we allocate, I don't know, I'm just I'm going to put out hundred thousand dollars towards this. How far would would that get us in terms of both the apartment complex rebates and? I don't. I don't know that you could do a public charger for less than thirty thousand. We're talking about pickup. more of like a rebate, but like a, a yeah, yeah, like thing. a percentage of it. Yeah, like what the IRA does is gives you back thirty percent of things. Okay, so you could do something like that. That might 30, last for yeah. a while. It wouldn't last forever, but you know, initially you're probably nobody's going to know about it first. Right. Once they find out about it, will they still be able to manage the seventy percent? That's so. The question. You know, what's the incentive? Be, it'd be you know whether they could figure out a way to budget. Yeah, I right. also think it's putting them in contact with the right people to help them with that. I think that there may be apartment collectors that would love to have a conversation with the Electrify America or Charge Point, but mm -hmm. they don't really even know where to and go know, right. mm -hmm. to make that connection with someone yeah. that can help them yeah. with that charging. So yeah. I, I think just even making that connection is value is mm -hmm. a valuable first thing. Yeah. I'm yeah. Love, yeah. love you guys. <laughs> um, uh, We've talked to the S's office, um, and their legislative director told us that they were handling IRA money they, through, or they were referring it to some nonprofits. I didn't follow up on that then and find out what nonprofits. Because I wouldn't, uh, if I were in this committee, I wouldn't waste a lot of time worrying about the, uh, the ins and outs of, of, of rebates and figuring that out, because that's not heavy lifting. And it seems like that that's federal, so the federal office. This is for a block grant that we're getting for the city. Oh, I see. Yeah, so we're, we're, we've are we been tasked to giving recommendations to the city as to how to utilize the grant. For that, that particular grant. The Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, $300,000. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, of the, if we're talking about, because we've got some other ideas that are going to be talked about. So I'm just, I'm just putting out a number to kind of think through, okay, what does that get us, right? Where does that, yeah. is yeah. it worth it? Is it, is, I mean, how many apartments might that help? I, I don't know. We, we really don't have all those answers today, but I think... I just wanted to throw that out as a question. Just a quick note, if you guys do choose the little route of um, electric based and chargers, there would be room for collaboration with like WAMP who's already doing this and trying to get mm -hmm. public chargers mm -hmm. out there. So that might be a good route or better for yeah. the project mm -hmm. as they're looking for room for collaboration. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and for me, I think that personally, I'm speaking for myself, that that is a priority because I think that we need to prepare for the fact that cars are going to switch over in the next 10, 15 years, more and more and more, mm -hmm. and that we want to be ahead of that, not behind it. I, I agree it's a priority. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm not sure it's our priority. I feel like there's eight or 10 other groups who are probably focused on that from KDOT on down. Um, and our little $300,000 is going to be a drop in their bucket, which, you know, doesn't necessarily mean we wouldn't want to do that, but, I'm still looking for something where we can make the difference somewhere where other people aren't paying attention. That's what I'd sure. like, ideally. Sure. I will, I'll push back one thing on KDOT. They're doing it on the highways. They're not doing it in the city. Right. 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 So if we could do something with, with WAMPO that would affect the city and affect our ability, I think that there's some value in that. It's certainly worth thinking about yeah. and pursuing, but I'm, I'm still yeah. trying to, Wait yeah. for the next item on the list. We'll go ahead. Sorry, I, I, I did. Yeah. Question on yeah. this, this electric transport. Uh, one of the things I've been talking about on the park board is switching from two-stroke engines to electric yeah. battery-operated mm -hmm. equipment, mm -hmm. especially for our contractors. And there's yeah. been pushback from some park board members that we can't tell the contractors what equipment what to do. they use. Mm -hmm. So we can incentivize we them. We can incentivize right. them. Yeah. And there's some discussion about, you know, make size of contracts or whatever. But okay. Uh, if there's a way, and I don't know if, you know, all these two-stroke edgers and blowers and whatever else fits under this kind of item or fits somewhere else, but that's something that I would like to think about. about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just looked at the cities uh, because we added the multi-blades 
everybody remembers that's on the website now and you can get money back on that but on that is also a caveat that if you are a landscape company you cannot apply for it right. mm -hmm. um, but it also specifically calls out blowers and edgers and all that kind of stuff not applicable so if there was a separate section where like the people okay. that the city contracts with that they could do that yeah. and, and not just city contractors that. but if there's all these landscape companies if we can help oh, them convert absolutely away yeah. from the two strokes yeah. to battery if there's a way to do like a separate one so that this population is served and this population is also you know maybe we could do that i don't know how many landscape companies there are a lot in town. a lot oh god and and some of them are probably not going to be the least bit interested but i can think of at least a couple off the top of my head that have absolutely would be yeah just for yeah for environmental responsibility. Right, well, yeah, any well, rebate stuff. If yeah. I might add to that, I think there's also a, a lot of people who are still using propane fuel forklifts. We have a huge amount of warehouses in the city. So I think that's something else you might look into if you're gonna start because I would assume people who operate a you know, large warehouse have more ability and flexibility to adopt these things than say someone who just has a flatbed trailer and a lawn. I don't know about the weight, you know, the, the power in the forklift, something like that. But on a leaf blower, John Deere made a presentation to maintenance at parks to show their latest equipment and how they're meeting the standards that these, you know, the guys want to blow grass clippings all the way to Oklahoma. But John Deere now has equipment that will almost do that. Battery-operated. battery, operated. battery, battery operated. Operated. yeah. yeah. Um, would this maybe fall under energy savings performance contracts? If you're going to do, like you said, a new contract with, you know, different companies that are suppliers to the city, that maybe that's part of it. Um, contracts is operations, and I'm on the policy side. Yeah. The yeah. So I was thinking in terms of what the city. But I want you to bring it up. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't even know who all our contractors are. It's kind of B and C. Make some noise about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and if we can put some of this toward that. It wouldn't have to be a huge amount, probably, no. but enough that it would give them an incentive. It's not like it's going to pay for the entire cost. That's not the intention, but to right. to give them a rebate them if it. they do it. Yeah. So with that same logic, are you going to have them turn in their gas? You know, what I mean, well, are, 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 that's the way it works right, right now. Right. I mean, with with equipment every year, they add. You know, there's right. turnover of. You know, so things. from this perspective, it isn't about a like like taking one out of performance out of to service to, or to just adding more, more. In. you're just thinking as they add more equipment let's encourage them to make wiser choices as mm -hmm. they add. Mm -hmm. yeah well and it's the same way with transit we still have all the buses right you know and that they've added the electric ones i know mike wants to replace them all but at this point he doesn't have that many but as time passes he'll be able to take some out of service i hope yeah and then um, add new ones back in yeah add electric ones back in. right yeah okay Okay. All right, and so for the last time, I kind of broke it down into what's finance. So I'm mocking sustainable finance solution for energy project and program with loan funds. Um, so this would for governments that are considering options to fund a range of clean energy products. Um, so this will need like project manager, finance services, stakeholders, and a program approach. So when we're talking about this, I think it mostly talks about what loans could we give out to maybe loan from communities or anything to put maybe solar or something or something like that. Just um, just one of the many options or anything, but financing is one of the options. So you're talking about financing for an individual to put solar on their home, and you're talking about financing for someone to set up a solar installation business. Uh, for someone to put solar on their home, that was the okay. specific just kind of example yeah. I gave. It yeah, no, have that's like that. that's a that's a good idea. Yeah, so setting up that. some kind of program mm -hmm. like that is yeah, we could work with um, Flint Hills mm -hmm. because they have their own program and it's much less expensive, so this would have a real impact. Mm -hmm. on them okay. and then workforce for governments interested in supporting community members to gain a first first job or enter a new career resulting from investments in clean energy so key activities would include workforce needs assessments program design and curriculum development stakeholder engagement um paying trainers and trainees included wraparound including wraparound services so as we're talking about um going like electric and stuff like that we would probably need more people 
to be able to work on those electric installations. So how, how can we switch people over into this new industry? Could this maybe be a stipend program or something? Because Cloud County Community College has renewable energy program. Mm -hmm. Right now, they don't have anybody teaching solar, but they do have someone that'll teach you how to climb up one of those wind turbines mm -hmm. and repair it maintenance tech at program. the top. Yeah, yeah. The maintenance. Um, and those pay pretty well. But the training is what you have to get. And I it's think, like a two-year training. So. I think uh, under this, a stipend could qualify. I'd have to look more exactly at the question, but I don't see why yeah. it wouldn't fit. It's exactly kind of yeah. what yeah. Send the it Wichita is. kids up there to take this <laughs> class. Well, and yeah. WSU Tech has a, with that area behind East High mm -hmm. in their um, shop, mm -hmm. they, have an elect they have a renewable or alternative fuels, I think is what it's called, is alternative fuels program where they're teaching them how to work on the electric cars. On the electric cars? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Like building electric cars or maintenance? Maintenance. maintenance. Mm -hmm. That's a big need. Right, I mean, that's one of those struggles with availability in electric cars here is if a dealer can't have one on the lot if he doesn't have an employee on who staff fix who's it. certified to work. On yeah. They can't yeah, even yeah. get them in. Yeah, so that's actually a huge. Right, there's a program. So there's a program already doing it. Yeah. We could lift up. I think last time in May, we talked about like the, energy audit that there's not very many people doing that either yeah. how many do we do you have any idea lauren how many people go through the program i can't remember i toured it it was like before covid when i toured it so yeah. it's been a while I'll be interested but it's a high school people. program right or is it a, yeah, yeah. Post well, high school. the high school can go over but it's still it's a wsu good. tech program mm -hmm. that anybody can sign up as they sign up for automotive one of their courses is the alternative fuels Oh, so it'd be interesting to maybe use some of the money to give us a, a stipend to, I don't know. I mean, again, that's kind of why I'm asking how many people go through it. Is it, you know, 10 people a year? Is it 50? Yeah, it I, I'd like to know what the limiting factor is. Is it that yeah. people can't afford the course if yeah. that's not, or they don't they, know, or it they exists. just don't know about it or don't want to, yeah. don't want to climb up to the top of one of those towers, which is where I personally would be. Yeah. Um, then giving a stipend isn't really going to if we think of like, I mean, I'm again making numbers up at this point, but a thousand dollars for a student to go to a renewable energy program, whether it's WSU Techs for EV maintenance or it's, you know, Cloud, learning, yeah, yeah, Concordia. Learning, yeah, I mean, something like that. That, but with the probably with the stipulation since it's city money, that they would need to come back and utilize it here right. for X amount of time. Except there's no wind turbines allowed in Sedgwick County. So that doesn't work very well, right. but, so, yeah. <laughs> um, but at least with the EV part, it would. I, mean, I know every solar company I work with and I work with a lot of them will all tell you that access to skilled labor is their number is one the, hurdle. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, good skilled help. Uh, Johnson County has mm -hmm. a solar program in the state, but there's nothing, you know, here locally. It would be interesting to see what WSU Tech would have to say about yeah going I, down. I that would path. want to talk to the colleges about and a program see that what they think might help to recruit bring up the log jam. Mm -hmm. I can do that. That'd be I can do that at Cloud County. I know the guy. Of course you know. Well, I mean, but I think it needs to be in local. local. It could it be, be it could be local, but well, I mean, okay, so if they if they have an EV maintenance program here, could would WSU Tech be at all interested in developing one for solar tech? Yeah, or something along those lines. Yeah, I mean, that, that's maybe a different discussion from the block grant maybe, but um, but thinking about some sort of grant for people to go to school, yeah. How does uh, is maintenance on the new electric buses contracted or done in-house? Anybody know the answer to that? I mean, I don't know. Most of the time, buses are leased, and part of the lease is the maintenance. I don't know. Do yeah. they own those? The batteries are leased, but the buses, I think, are. I don't know if the buses are leased, but I know the batteries are leased. Mm -hmm. So they get them replaced whenever need be. So I don't know no. for sure. I know about the, the school bus, bus program that, that I was listening to, those were leased buses. So, like, the school just they, they didn't own them. The lease company provided the maintenance. So they, they provided the certified. I, I was asking because, buses. once again, that's a procurement requirement conversation, yeah. right? If you want to be the company that our city spends money on mm -hmm. working on these vehicles, you will be part of our green jobs pipeline into the future where we have clean, sustainable, mm -hmm. free public transit, preferably. Mm -hmm. Or you won't be part of our city's contracts. You won't be a line item on our budget for millions of dollars a year. I think that's a very good incentive that will attract mm -hmm. a, an EV training program that really matters because 
It's cool if people can work on EV cars, but that's not going to solve the problem. It's just going to create a whole huge secondary market for lithium and cadmium. So really, if you want to talk about procurement situations, I would say this is a good one because if the city has a fleet of electric vehicles, that maintenance should be done in-house for the very sake of creating another generation of people to work on. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to make that connection. Uh, yeah. Jennifer Seymour is their dean. Oh, that'd be good. I've met with before. Yeah, that would be good. We get some answers, and that might help us determine, you know, can, what. You know, can how I much. ask? I'm sorry. While we're at this, Butler County Community College, mm -hmm. because Andover is part of the metro area, mm -hmm. does Butler County Community College sort of slide in as part of this, or is or is the fact it's in Butler County make it? Not count. I don't know. And if what do you think? I just wondered if anybody else knew. Does Butler have their own money? Money. They Probably. do. So they all were also awarded a block grant along with Cedric County. There's was I want to say it was like seventy thousand because I think Cedric County got like seventy nine thousand. If I remember correctly, or maybe it was sixty nine and fifty nine. I don't remember, but it was significantly less than ours. And I haven't been able to reach out or get in contact with anybody who told me what they're using their funding for. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the requirements are in terms of, you know, sponsoring, giving a stipend, scholarship, whatever it is, or establishing a program outside of the city area limits since it's supposed to be for the city. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd have to look into that and I can write that down. To kind I, of I'm not work. sure it's even essential. Other than that, I, I would just ask that we be careful we don't end up working at cross purposes to some of the counties around us, mm -hmm. especially the ones that are in our metro area. Sure. Absolutely. Does this money have to be spent? In the city of Wichita, or is it a metro? <laughs> <laughs> I can look into that. Okay. If the county yeah, has their own funds, then it's probably city. city. Yeah, I yeah. bet it's a city. Which would be city. I, I would assume it's, they would, since the city's getting the money, it would have to be within the city, city limits. Yeah. Probably. yeah. But there was also room for collaboration with like Butler and Sedgwick County. So, which is why I was reaching out to them oh, and okay. seeing. So that's why there might be some gray area where there could be overlap. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, moving on, or can I? Yeah. What's SIP stand for? Um, Sustainability Integration Board. That's us. Oh, that's, that's yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> one little thing is that I would put all the money in one thing, and my vote is the two-stroke. I think it's a Um, so we do need a recommendation by the end of next month, next time you guys have your meeting. Mm -hmm. um, this is the amount in funding, so a little over $380,000. Our application is due by January 31st. This was the date I found, and I'll kind of show you what that timeline looks like and why we need um, it by next month as opposed to maybe later in the year. Um, consider policy priorities that align with Justice 40 initiatives. So as I mentioned earlier, we do kind of want to fit under that Justice 40. So we can target low-income minority neighborhoods or like heat areas of like that map yeah. and stuff, that would be great. So if I may, um, did, did, we, did we review efficient buildings? I saw that was a part of the list and did we not? We haven't yet. Okay. So, yeah. that was, we've already got that. I yes. mean, we've already been doing, we've already got a recommendation to do that, right? To From apply the committee. 1,000 toward energy efficiency for, to toward perhaps low income neighborhoods, stuff like that. Is that stuff we've talked about before in the past? I think not in terms of EECBG. Um, so that's definitely something. I think when we were, when I was done presenting, that's kind of when, if you guys had some ideas, free to I discuss. Really okay. We've been kind of doing some of that as we go, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, and so just a timeline. So this is when we're wanting your um, 
recommendation, September or October, it's gonna be like Penny and I developing that energy efficiency and conservation strategies. Some of those requirements that we're talking about earlier, as I was going through what the requirements are, just making sure we're staying within those bounds um, and kind of getting some of that other work in as well. Um, hope to update you in November. And then for December, we submit the finished application and project was presented to city council. Since it is a pretty, it's gonna be a bigger recommendation, a bigger project um, with quite a bit of funds, we expect it to be kind of a more lengthy process when it comes to council. And so since we're planning on doing that all in December, we're hoping to have everything submitted by uh, January, January, early January if mm -hmm. possible. And when would we actually get funding for it? When <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll okay. look into that when the funding comes. I so it'd be sometime in 2024, but mm -hmm. probably more like halfway through the year, I'm guessing, something like that. Yeah, it usually takes so it's about a months. year from now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Lauren, I know that you had a had a thought that you wanted to share. Yeah. Um, we've worked in the past with SCED, which is South Central Kansas Economic Development District. It's a yeah. Long, yeah. 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 Fun acronyms. Um, they handle funds for the weatherization assistance program, which is um, allocated through KHRC, so Kansas Housing Resource Corporation. Um, and I've worked with their team, and I know we've worked um, with SCED and with the Neighborhood Resource Centers to help get the word out about the assistance program. Uh, but they do things like sealing drafts and air leaks, caulking doors and windows, weather stripping, um, testing, cleaning, and repairing heating and cooling systems and water heaters, insulating ceilings, walls, floors, and foundations, and upgrading lighting fans and refrigerators. And there's income requirements that are 200% uh, of the federal poverty level, which would put us into that Justice 40. Mm -hmm. um, but as I was talking to her, um, their program administrator for SCED that's in Bel Air, um, but they do a lot of stuff in Wichita and they have things like we do it, they do an energy audit as part of their process in any house. Mm -hmm. They find, oh, well, you need a new energy efficient furnace, but you also need this, but we only have funding for this. So there could be some gap funding that we're able to partner with them and they're already doing the energy audit. They're already out and about doing the public outreach and the marketing to find the folks that need assistance. And it's not only adding to energy efficiency, which ultimately reduces emissions, mm -hmm. but they're also helping some of our energy burden in our community afford their utilities. There. And, mm -hmm. and hopefully, the ultimate goal, keeping them in their homes. Right. So it does both. It does both. If um, we wanted to do something with them, could we stipulate that it is with like the money that we would do as gap funding um, or to support those mm -hmm. projects be Wichita only? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And maybe even in certain zip codes. Or maybe with just Section 8 housing or with maybe first-time home buyers. Well, and they're already, to qualify for their program, you have to be at 200% of the poverty level. And Section 8 housing, the landlord would have to comply. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm kind of thinking, you know, we, you know, 67214, for example, is an area that we'd probably want to prioritize as an example. And I think that would, not only them, but that's... An area that South we know. Wichita too. South Wichita too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. maybe we could, if we did that, you know, maybe we put some stipulations as to, to these types of things, right? Whether it's Section Eight or in certain neighborhoods or zip codes or whatnot, that that's where we want the funding to go. They probably don't do Section Eight. Yeah, I was going to say I'm those are landlord-owned properties. Owned. Those are not homeowned. So homeowner properties. But the problem first, is a lot of those. Homeowner. How many people at that level have? Our um, homeowners. Yeah. Well, some of them are. Some are, yeah. Um, but you know, they've aged out. They can't do the work yeah, anymore. James has a question. Yeah. Yep. Oh, James. Yeah. I mean, one reason I like energy efficiency is because you can spread it across a broader population. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I think I don't think you necessarily need to be a homeowner. I mean, you can do things like hot water heaters or weatherization, and those are things that any runner would sure appreciate. And so, uh, and then to the the person in the back with the gray shirt. I think it gives them something that they can hold on to and appreciate uh, and see in, in their next month's utility bill. So um, I think the conversation that's going this direction right now is something I'm I'm in support of for sure. Yeah. And to that point, like the city of Wichita gave them funds to help 
Right. And they it's have more affordable bills. So you're not using your funds to create something or to bit, to get you know get something mm -hmm. off the ground. Being able to Amplify. enrich something that's already existed, where they're vetting the, the the customer, they're they're doing the income eligible verification and all of those things on your behalf. So yeah, I and think we could get a, the most value out of your dollar. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and we could put a cap on it too of like how you know seventy five hundred per household or whatever that yeah, number right. is, yeah. so that we can spread it over. Um, the other thing in Austin and the Rio Grande Valley, um, my counterparts at Texas Gas Service, they have a low income free equipment program and they work with Meals on Wheels and Meals on Wheels has a, um, a housing or a home repair program. Mm -hmm. As they bring in their meals, they do home repair and then they find the um, folks that are in need of a new furnace or a new mm -hmm. uh, windows or whatever not and make that recommendation so they work through meals on wheels to get all of the vetting yeah. mm -hmm. to see that they're eligible for it and then they get a new energy efficient appliance through that mm -hmm. that would be cool too do you know if this program because i know one of the problems that i think that this program has run into is that when people have toilets that leak mm -hmm they are unable to replace the toilets because the floor has to be replaced. That was one of on my list under Justice 40. Is there a way to put some money to be able to do that kind of a repair? Because a leaking toilet can put your water bill sky high and you can never catch up. It's continuously. Yeah, until you get your water cut off. Then. Yeah. I mean, but that's, I know that that's a problem mm -hmm. because that water's... happens with some of the SCED stuff too. Like they want to put in an That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying, but yeah. But the building's not to code. And so then right. they can't afford right. to get it to code. And so then right. they can't qualify for that. So this could be like a, maybe a way to supplement mm -hmm. that. It can be quite expensive to replace a bathroom floor. Right. Um, but these bathrooms are probably tiny too. So, right. you know, it's maybe block we can right. see that as energy efficiency. And th that's the thing, well, because it's, it's not it's energy yeah. specific. So I think when they're talking about energy, they're talking about like electric. Like, so water doesn't count. I would have to look into if water mm -hmm. counts, but just looking on the basis of what everything and what it's broken down to and what we're looking at here, I think it would only be specific to that's energy. And energy yeah. 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 It is conservation. It would save money for the, for the owner. Mm -hmm. And so, so the policy priorities We're, is fix it a lot of individual fix it is that policy i mean in the sense that we would actually be helping real people with their i mean it's not policy but it's, it's a program i don't think the funding has to go to policy though does it because they're doing i mean they're talking about projects. doing um you know light bulbs for the for the county building so it's it's projects too it's not just policy I only know what I read. Yeah. James. James. Uh, yeah, it's worth mentioning the city has a, a seemingly effective water rebate program. So the city is already good at rebates. Mm -hmm. And if somebody takes advantage of it every year, uh, they do have low flow toilets on there. Uh, mm -hmm. So the rebate program <laughs> is familiar with and could easily implement on an energy efficiency platform as well. Um, how, how they do that is you go essentially buy the device and, and then you submit the receipt for that. Um, right. So on the toilet example, they don't know if you installed it per se, but you would get $100 off your, your low flow toilet, so. Yeah, uh, I think it is 100, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. But you can't install the toilet if your floor is bad. Yeah. That's yeah. the part that, that I know to be true. So I don't know, maybe yeah. this won't fit, but it would be nice if we could. Uh, Sometimes it seems like you have one big resident, and then sort of that stops there. And like, I'd love to have them go to their church and say, you know, like, this is what happened, this is how I was helped. And so the thought is then, would there be an entity in Wichita that could go and do a video? Um, here in Wichita, this kind of, you know, we did this maintenance. This kind of maintenance that almost anyone can do to see if it's working or not working, sort of replicate that and spread it so that more people would benefit from some of those simple fixes or, or assessments. I think it would be a good thing in the in sort of the Wichita City 
arsenal to say, yeah, we have a YouTube channel that shows how we help people. Mm -hmm. Providing information. You know, um, Wichita ranks 99 out of 100 cities for the American Council for Energy, energy Efficient Economy. 99 out of 100. Is it feasible to look at their categories and see what can be shorn up that would benefit Wichita to raise its amazing score? <laughs> I was waiting for you to say appalling score, but go ahead. <laughs> um, it's, it's easy to look up. Um, well, that's um, what Wichita the... is 99 out of 100. There are plenty of categories that are highlighted. Community-wide initiatives, building policies, transportation policies, energy and water utilities, local government operations. I mean, out of those categories, we, we, we rate very small in all of them. But some of this is what we're talking about right now, too, that might help. And that when EFC reports it specifically, that's not policy. That's different than policy. I well, think what James is trying to get at is like, if we're actually moving the city to pass policies, these are things that can't just be rolled back, gotten rid of, or negated by future election results. And so if there is something that's actually on the books, that's you know a serious uh, like obligation, of business owners, landlords, something like that. I mean, we're going to have to hold people's feet to the fire. It's not, it, people aren't going to put in sweat equity in a building that is meant to be basically a long term depreciation mechanism that poor people live. That's not how the city is ever run in terms of real estate. So I think Jane really making a good point without some teeth to back it up, without some enforcement, the same poor people, no matter what 200% of the poverty line guidelines you set. Will probably as renters continue to live in the same buildings the same way, polluting the environment, vibrating wherever people the same way because their air conditioning is blowing right out of the windows that haven't been redone since 1978 or something. Just we, we got to think about actual policy, not just here, have some money to fix it because the people in here aren't going to get it that way. And I know that right now the city council is looking at some policy. Yeah. Okay for rental units. I think the critical difference from what I'm understanding from what Jane's saying is, if we support a program to do fix-its or whatever, the city's gonna say, great, let's do that. And as soon as it runs out of money, that program's gonna disappear and sure. so is the whole idea. Yep. We're supposed to be trying to make changes that stay fundamental, changes to the way the city operates so and the people in it operate and i'm not sure that that necessarily is possible <laughs> but i, I think well, we ought to be aiming that way the question too i think it, it's right through my mind right now is okay we've got we've got this grant money that we have to provide a recommendation for right so we're, right now we are discussing different ideas mm -hmm. you know we've, we've discussed some that have to do with forward thinking more in terms of getting more ev stations in various places to try to incentivize the population to get more and to allow them to be able to get more um, electric vehicles over time that's one idea lauren is coming forth with trying to find a partnership that we could amplify with the funds um, to help people not live in um, situations that are less than desirable for anybody right so from my view, we are discussing multiple ideas, and I'm sorry that that's making some people angry, but I think it's good that we need to um, we need to have this discussion. We need to put ideas on the table, and then we can evaluate today and next month which one we want to actually say, which one or ones we want to say to the city, this is where we think your money should go. I don't think anybody's angry. Yeah. 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 I, it's, it might be frustration. Or frustrated, yeah, whichever I'd word you want to use. I'm a lot more open. One thing that Randy brought up to me when we were um, talking and, and organizing was how many nonprofits. And what's terrible is when you have this idea, you have this initiative, and you find out that three other nonprofits are working on the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it seems like it would be useful to know what nonprofits are doing what in Wichita to have that written so that if 
we don't say we're going to plan a street here if somebody does it already. You know? Sure. Um, and then that also could be coalition building and collaboration. Mm -hmm. I read something where uh, energy planning saves can save up to twenty percent of the of the energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was looking to, looking through some of these things, and I thought that there's probably I'm not sure how many city buildings there are in the city. You know, all across this, you know, police, fire, uh, you know, this library here yeah. uh, that all uses electricity, gas for heating and cooling and lighting and. And uh, there's probably a need for an energy audit. And I'm not sure if there's had, I'm sure there was one done probably 10 years ago. Uh, I know that Ed Martin, I think, did some of that work years ago. He was a city, previous city employee, but uh, probably that needs to be looked at again. And I think that that would be uh, just focusing on what we do have already as current infrastructure, just maintaining it and trying to run it as efficiently as possible is kind of where I kind of, kind of where I kind of feel like money should be, a lot of money should be put towards that. And then, you know, that's just kind of the first first step. And then, uh, you know, I like the idea of, of you know, giving money to or organization that uh, does help with low-income families that can help, uh, you know, address you know drafty windows or right. or other other energy efficient issues but uh i just i don't know how much money the city spends on you know power and light and when uh, there would be i mean one of the the goals that we have is to try to save the city money in terms of energy efficiency programs too right mm -hmm. so from that standpoint yeah i mean if we if we could do um, more of an energy audit of what the city spends and then from that be able to provide recommendations. I think the question that or the statement he made earlier about, okay, great, the money runs out, then what, right? And I don't know if this is a grant that we can get more than once or is it a one-time off? Um, I think it's a one-time allocated. I know there's like formula dollars that can be applied for later, but mm -hmm. this is the one that was specifically allocated to the city, which I know other cities have gotten it before and have gotten it a couple of times. I think it just depends on the federal government and how often they're doing it for how much they're doing it. Okay. Because I like the idea of doing an energy audit, but then what, right? If we use the money on or the energy audit and maybe just, for example, Lauren's you know, idea of working with SCED, then, okay, great, we've done the audit, but how do we actually get the city moving forward to save that money? Another idea? Yeah. And I know we've discussed it, but <clears throat> Wichita is in a deep, deep, deep tree hole. Um, we've lost so many trees. We're losing more. Last winter was horrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we could spend $300,000 on trees and still not dig us all, our city out of the hole. Yeah. And I don't know that we necessarily need to do that, but I would like us to seriously consider doing something to uh, plant some more trees. We can do them on public land. Or they, there can be programs for private land. They benefit everybody. Mm -hmm. It's a long-term investment. It will be giving benefits to the city for the next 100 years. Um, and there is definitely a need. Yeah, And it has all kinds of both carbon sequestration and temperature, energy efficiency, and various other benefits that are not as obvious, perhaps, to some people as something you can energy audit, but they're there. They're definitely there. A tree that shades your house provides a lot of energy savings. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also... That shades any concrete. Uh, yes, yeah. providing... Uh, Carbon and, yeah. and moisture. Comfort. Yeah. And, yeah. Park, Parks Department is going through two versions, two drafts of a tree policy. Mm -hmm. Is that so you recognize that it's like 5,000 trees that are cut down every year yeah. and only like 1,500 that are replaced because that's been going on for a while. It's been right? going on for a long time. And it's a budget issue. It's because right. you can't buy, you know, and that's my. Do, does the city have a tree growing out station anymore? Yes. No. Yes. Well, they have a pilot program to buy bare root and put them in a gravel bed. And then within six months or whatever, you have a, a, a well-developed tree that costs $30 rather than $150. Yeah. If we it's would, very if well, we if we would support financially the city establishing a really substantial tree growing outstation, that would leverage some serious mm -hmm. advantage, I think. Can I, can I get in here? Just for a quick second. Mm -hmm. This is kind of, I think, like five things people have said. 
why do we have a tree problem in Wichita? And I can tell you as someone who's had the city remove uh, the elm in front of his house and his landlord just had to remove the dead elm behind his house. And I live right next to the river, right? Mm -hmm. It's these dang beetles. It's these dang bugs. It's this or that again. That tree smelled like yogurt all last summer. I'm not kidding because of the smell I can give of you the list. Yeah, go ahead. from the beetles that were eating it. It was that common. It was just rotten on the tree. And the entire tree starts falling apart. And guess what really takes the R value out of your house? How about a 40 foot long limb through your roof, right? Mm -hmm. So in addition to that, as a you know, obvious consequence of the crazy storms we're getting, right? That caused Evergy so many problems in the last week. Think about the trees, right? What are we doing to actually prevent that? So are we doing any preventative work on the waves of invasive species and or native ones that are just getting out of control that are destroying our old growth trees? Because we, we, it, it takes more than six months to uh, get what, what I've seen removed just from around my house. And then we have parks and other systems where we've decided astroturf and concrete are like the appropriate way well, to dress the ground. We don't want to get into right. that because there is a reason for that. I but there's that. also a staffing <laughs> issue at Parks Department that they can only do a tree survey once every three years. They can, they do, there are people that go out and look at the city's trees, the public trees, the parks, the green spaces. They can only get to a tree every three years. And by that time, you know. And trying to get. What about subsidies? Hey guys, home? I'm gonna, I'm gonna trying stop to us. get, trying to get all the invasive species and diseases to I'm go gonna, back into the toothpaste tube is beyond our yeah. right I'm I gonna, think I'm what we can us. do is select trees that are resistant to the things that are around here and the, what and we the plant city already does that they, i'm gonna i'm gonna stop us just for a second because what i'm trying to figure out is where this fits yeah. in, in our categories yeah. and that's what i actually was going to ask would it fit uh, well, part of it is decreased environmental exposure and burdens for um, disadvantaged communities under Justice 40, plant more trees and train them how to keep them alive. Because mm -hmm. that's a big part of the yeah. problem. You put a tree in and then nobody waters it. Yeah, and the city they have cannot to know. have staff out there for the first year no. or two watering these well, trees. They do, they have contractors, but you know, well, the contractor yeah. only goes so far. Yeah. Well, and then they just come and they dump a whole bunch of water once and then they come back three months later, that's not going to cut it. Maybe that's where water conservation fits in as well. But I mean, if we're subsidizing people to get to buy new yeah. manufactured yeah, products, much. I can only imagine what we get to, you know, subsidize the great arborists we have in this town. Like, we seriously Guys, I want to I wanna, I wanna kind of get back to, to what for sure we can do with this. Um, and then... Okay, so just to kind of recap where we are. So some of the ideas on the table. We've got the energy efficiencies working with SCED option. We can look into trees and see if it can somehow fit um, into, into this. Um, we've got the idea of EVs and we've got, uh, I'm forgetting one. Two stroke engines oh, stroke stroke engine. being yeah. Right, the incentives to eliminate two stroke engines and go into battery right. power. And we've also talked about education grants as well. Um, so those are all ones. The only other one that I might add to our list um, would be, you know, potentially on the um, incentivizing solar campaign, something like that mm -hmm. would be something else we could look at that would be also more policy focused. Uh, okay. I would like to note that James in the chat said okay. strategically placed tree can save a homeowner up to 20% on energy costs. Right. Mm -hmm. We do a grant annually that distributes hundreds, free, hundreds of free trees. Each tree, five gallon, I think costs about $100. Okay. So who is... Oh, so we could, you're saying that you want us to do that? That could be, could do that. Five gallon, it's, they're, they're grown in gravel, so I don't know how they measure the gallon size, but. I, just a data point, as you think about buying trees, I was surprised at how expensive trees are. And they are unbelievably expensive. Mm -hmm. That cost has been rising yeah. so much in the last few years. I feel like one of the things we might want to look at is, okay, so. Lauren, if maybe you could ask um, Sked about, okay, what does it generally cost them to do a home, a range, right? And then how many homes are they currently doing in a year? You know, those types of things. Yeah, they have, um, now this is KHRC numbers for the state, but they had 857 Kansas households were served last year. And so half of That's them Kansas, probably so. Sedgwick County. Um, I 
think at least Aaron told me they had 377 over the last two years. And then how much are they spending per house would be important to know. That, though, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think because right now we are, we're kind of, we're throwing ideas, but we don't have any dollars behind it really. It's all mm -hmm. conjecture, right? So let's find out for that one. What, what are they, what are they on average, you know, so we have an idea. Um, that would be one thing I would suggest for the trees too, looking into that and like, okay, again, you know, for kind of based off of what James said, you know, if we wanted to look at a program around that, you know, again, numbers and all, you know, we need to get, put some numbers behind all of these. Trees are an issue for park board. So I know it's being addressed there. I like the idea of homeowners or, you know, putting in backyards, replacing trees mm -hmm. that are, that a homeowner may not be able to afford a $300 tree, but right. um, if there was a way that a block grant could. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. A lot of people could get a lot of trees if they were $50 instead of $300. So that, but can you find out what the cost is? Of the trees on an individual basis, at the from the forestry department, yeah. Whoever does whoever uh, grows them, yeah. Is that still out at Linwood Park area? Or is uh, someplace else? I don't think it's out of the maintenance yard, but I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Or from McLean. So I can get an average. Yeah. The problem with with what they're doing is they don't get the first choice of the trees that they want because they all come from out of nurseries out of Oregon or you know somewhere else, and the big box stores buy them up and do the very same thing. And so they still get a choice. They still get the, some good trees, but they don't get you know, all the ones they want. I so we need the trees, trees that grow here. We're doing these in people's yards. Yeah, trees. I know. But yeah. It, if we're talking about fresh food available in grocery deserts, but an apple tree in somebody's backyard. Someone who has like two apple trees and three plum trees and one peach tree. I think I've got three peaches off of all of those. <laughs> I'm gonna I, I want to kind of continue with the board just for a second. I'll get back to everybody here in a minute. That's this up. Um Tammy, I was gonna ask you too, do you have any information on the type of cost that it would cost to put in a commercial or not a, a paid um EV charger or something like that? Oh uh, again, I think it's between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. It's and that might be even conservative from my experience with um clean charge network is who installed the ones that we did in the Kansas City area. They're, they're usual, they're very expensive to install. Okay. The ones they're putting matter. on the highway are a million dollars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they're they're probably multiple dollars. stations for multiple. There are multiple they, stations yeah. and they're fast chargers. They're so fast, fast fast chargers and they have to redo right. their whole electrical grid out there. Yeah. And yeah. electrical vehicles are not low income. <laughs> Both okay. are who are low income. Yeah. I'm a long way from. Yeah. Sure. Where did sure. we ever land? Didn't we talk about doing an energy audit with like City Arts? We, we did. Talked about yeah. with we, that. Did. we ended up bearing off because we were going to use the money instead for the, the position. Um, so we ended up dropping that for now. But but an energy audit as part of this might not be a bad thing to mm -hmm. have the city do and recommend. It wouldn't be that much money to of this three hundred, you know, and eighty thousand dollars to have that done. So that might be a recommendation on a, from a policy standpoint or from a, a find out where we are and how can the city improve. Would also be good for whoever we hire um, for the sustainability officer to have that, that information. Do we know how much um, it's gonna cost to develop that strategy that we have to do the um, energy efficiency and conservation strategy? Do we know? No, not as a right now. How much of a chunk it takes out mm -hmm. of that? Yeah. I mean, I think it's worth it in order to kind of create a plan, but then, okay. For so, sure, yeah. But, but I think we need some real dollars behind this because right now it's like, okay, we could, to her point earlier, we could use all of the money for one project and really hone in on that project or, you know, we could potentially put in a hundred or $150,000 towards this, but then have some money to work on trees or whatever, right? I mean, I just I think we need some real dollars behind these proposals. Can we ask the committee who put forward that proposal to do the energy audit? to see if, did they have some numbers? We did, I can ask Paul okay. um, what that would look like. Yeah. But we were also trying to do it more on the cheap, so to speak. Well, <laughs> but, no. yeah, well yeah, cool. the cheap is always good. But. Well, yeah, but but also in the sense of if we wanna do a full energy audit of the city, that's a whole different level than- oh, like, We no. don't have nearly the money for that. <laughs> the city buildings, I mean. For, yeah, yeah, I'm still. 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 Yeah. yeah, just if we could start with one and find out the weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Sam, I felt like just from the beginning of this board, I think the city needs an overall inventory. I mean, mm -hmm. even initially, no one could even tell us how many buildings had motion detector lights or how many, you know, I mean, it felt like that 
before that there there was no we didn't know where we were today mm -hmm. to be able to say kind of have that baseline. Go. We had no baseline. There was right. no there was a lot of unknowns with just regards to the, the city's overall energy management and, and right. LED lighting. What buildings have LED lightings? What don't? Nobody knows. How many buildings have motion lights? Nobody knows. If you don't well, know. Yeah. And to the point that Cedric County's using it for their own buildings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we thinking about the citizens or are we thinking, thinking about, about the city, city buildings, the city operations? Yeah. Um, so Sked uh, responded to me. She said, uh, averaging around eight to ten thousand per house. Per house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we looking at one grant or three grants or five grants? Are we gonna, we're going to. We're going to in August so have to come decide. up with a recommendation of right. we want these three things or these five things or this Correct. one big thing. Yes. Yep. So today is kind of putting the ideas on the table, There's but no I think we need to do some we research. Have 10 or we could have one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I like the idea of the report card. Like, what, what the state of the city? Just yeah, and then also, um, I I wanted to do, and I still could, so much paid, I'd like to be paid, <laughs> for 30 hours, 40 hours of, of doing a report card on what what nonprofits in Wichita do what for sustainability. So we can reach out to them. Who does all, and, and you know, Churches do energy audits for their for their parishioners. They plant trees for their parishioners. Can we, you know, can, can we help spread that? It seems like it's such goodwill stuff. So carving out a little bit of that money to get that that report done. Mm -hmm. And I also have to put a, a, this idea of a pilot program for leave composting. It makes me crazy here in the fall to see all those leaves go to the, to the landfill. When we have soil issues here, and that and that, that just creates methane, and we'll never be able to use nutrients in those soil in that in those leaves because they're being mixed together with toxins. So I would say I would find a little neighborhood that's willing to do a pilot program, maybe not this time, but I just see that, that that's going to grow. That's going to really fast. Okay. Recycling in general, you know, in in Wichita, 2.8 percent of folks recycle through their the carts. Um, the national average is like 32 percent. Is serious. I'm gonna let you comment, and then we need to move on to our next topic. Go ahead. You guys were looking for the way that it's in this particular piece of funding, but I think you're talking about you're gonna want to control F heat islands and urban heat islands. Mm -hmm. And it'll fit in, I think, with like one of the direct things that, that the subheadings for that particular funding source is under in Iowa. Um, secondary, um, we really should think about the fact I just got a message from a union rep. It wasn't meant for me, it was full of a lot of profanity, so I'm not going to read it. But somebody was trying to work their worker after they'd already had heat exhaustion hmm. and they needed a break and it didn't happen. So we really ought to think about, once again, creating some sort of policy. You work your people outside of air conditioning in any weather hotter than a certain amount. I mean, even Texas is getting into this kind of stuff, right? That you mandate their ability to take a break, to get water, to you know, rehab in some sheds or necessarily or a vehicle. That's all we have, but one way, one way or the other, they're probably going to need monitoring systems. And these monitoring systems are like 30, 40 bucks. They're not expensive, but if we're going to put a stick out there for big business, I say we at least give them a little carrot and help subsidize their acquisition of these devices because a worker shouldn't have to buy a Fitbit to prove to their boss that they- Their heart rate's too high or their, yeah. Okay, thank you. I think Texas just banned people yeah. from having drink breaks. Yeah. They're yeah. not well, requiring it, they're stopping them. Yeah. Texas is not getting on board. I didn't yeah. say <laughs> how they're fixing it. I mean, you end heat exhaustion, kill off the entire population. Well, that's true. There is that. Yeah, that's, that's what they're probably probably the wrong do. way going about it, but hey. Oh, my. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to table this for right now. We've got some good ideas on the, on the table to discuss next time, but let's get some real numbers behind these things, um, so that we can decide, you know, next week or next month, how we want to, um, how we want to allocate it and kind of think so about the idea. So, so Lauren was just getting some numbers for us from, um, Sked to give us some ideas. So we can kind of talk through those next, more fully next time. And trees, uh, how many... Projects are going to get numbers. All of them. 
Well, I, so, I have a partnership. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I have a partnership. We, we use Arbor Day Foundation to distribute our trees. And, and so I'd be happy to work with them on some information on a larger campaign for the city. Sounds good. Thanks, James. Good. I was Sounds just going to say trees, like so many other things, it depends. Are you taught how big a tree, a five gallon tree, mm -hmm. a 20 gallon tree, a shade tree, an ornamental tree, shade mm -hmm. installed, not installed? I mean, yeah, so it just, I mean, we can plug numbers in, but there's going to be a lot of footnotes. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think ultimately we're going to recommend and then the city's going to have to dig in to, to the more yeah. specifically, but um, but we can at least give them some framework. Of Where the are trees like fit to look. in the grant? The hierarchy. I mean, that's. So I, 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 I was that looking was into that. So, so some of these questions that we have, I will contact kind of like our assistant with EECBG because this isn't an exhaustive list, and they okay. also say that in the blueprint, it's not an exhaustive list. Okay. So I can mm -hmm. some of these questions I've been jotting down. So oh, okay. I'll get with the assistant, and I'll try and get back with you guys as soon as I can. Some yeah. of that is in the that Justice Forty as well. Describe this stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's like one qualifier. And we have that NASA study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're supposed mm -hmm. to focus on that. So confirm it. That's a severe issue. Yep. Yeah. It's really high. and low income. I'm sorry. It's, I mean, it's really not even a question. We're kind of making a big deal out of it. They do nothing because it's literally one of the very things they mentioned in that bill that you're supposed to be addressing. So, so they, as far as open um, meetings, and slowing, how do yeah, we, I mean, as I develop or try to work with SCED to get numbers for you, do I send that directly to you mm -hmm. or, and yeah. then you'll yeah. give it to the, to board. the board? Okay. Yes, yeah. I can yeah. distribute that. Yeah. So if you guys yeah. have any information that you'd like me to distribute to the whole board, you can just send to me. You can CC Laura if you'd like, um, and then I can distribute it to the rest of the board. Okay. I'll work on trying to find some numbers on an energy audit um, so that we can have those as part of our equation too. So I'll, I'll take on that over the next month. Okay. Okay, um, one of the other topics we just wanted to review this time and make sure we're still on track and, and make any updates is on the committees themselves. See which ones are still active, which ones were active, but maybe lost their leader because um, they're off the board now or whatnot. Um, so wanna make sure that we're, we're still kind of on track with those. So Lori, I know you're still going strong with um, Waste and recycling. Yep, with waste <laughs> and recycling. Yes. Um, so I think how many members approximately are joining that on a regular basis? Um, we've got like seven people. Okay. That sometimes some come, sometimes others come. Sure. Um, but um, we are we've we've got several projects in the works. Mm -hmm. The number one thing that we got passed through this board mm -hmm. was the mulching blades. Right. Those are now on the city website. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also working, I don't know how we got conned into doing this, but we met with the trash haulers yep. months ago. And mm -hmm. as that worked its way out, we found that there was a real need from them mm -hmm. and from the city to try to reduce illegal dumping. Mm -hmm. So now the Waste and Recycling Committee is working on illegal dumping. Um, and we do have a meeting in a couple weeks okay. to talk about what we're going to do to move forward on that. We've got some sites already decided upon, basically, in order to do pilot projects. Okay. And maybe do a reduced cost of trash yep. in that area so that people don't have to illegally dump. They can pay for trash mm -hmm. cheap rather than the expensive trash that we okay. have in this city now. Yeah. That was one, and then to kind of to her point earlier about the leaves, I know that they were also- uh, That was part of our very much on the That was one of our phases, right, was yeah. to do compost. Yeah. Um, that but that's gonna involve getting some property that belongs to the city mm -hmm. um, and find the money to get it set up. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we can do though is work with something like Nudge mm -hmm. because they've already They're got the there. space right. that they can just take it all. Yeah. So we might not need to do a city property. Could use not as a supplier. But they, for could be the, they could be the contractor for it. Yep. And they can do things pretty relatively cheaply. Okay. Uh, they'd have to really gear up if we had a lot of people that are not doing it. But the mulching blades, if we can get people mulching instead of bagging, mm -hmm. that's number one. Right. And then we also have get an electric mower. It also says self-propelled mower, and that has to be removed. I have removed it. 
Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, I was like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> this is not an electric mower. <laughs> it can be, yeah. but it, uh, so good. Yeah. I thank you. I'm glad that's removed because, oh, uh, but you know, there's that too. You can get a rebate. It's only $50, but hey, it's, $50 it's an incentive to make you dollars. switch. Yeah. You know, so that's also a part of this, trying to get people to switch. back off of what they're doing and make a change mm -hmm. so that we don't have to worry so much about all the leaves and grass, right. mow them right. and mulch them. Yeah. So yeah, we, we're working along that those lines too, okay. That, but we've only gotten our first and second phase, I think, with the mulching blades passed through yep. the city council. Okay. So that's the only thing we're doing right now. We're gonna do the whole illegal dumping thing. Next. Next. Okay. And work on the video for mulching. Good. Yeah. Good. Perfect. That sounds good. Um, Tammy, so you're, you were energy or you are energy efficiency. How's that going? Um, you know, um, I had a co-chair and then she left, so we yep. haven't met. I will give an update. We did get some rumblings from the commission that they're finally going to um, issue a ruling on the energy efficiency tariff okay. within the next few weeks. So that would be <laughs> surprising and nice. I mean, they, they've been, they've had this for months and months and months without a ruling so there could the potential is that we would actually be able to have some energy efficiency programs in kansas mm -hmm. in the next we'll know in the next few weeks we were told so okay once we know that the building on that right if they get mm -hmm. whether that's commercial lighting or what what are what what i believe that we'll end up with is a demand response program and a low-income program if of, of the suite of programs that we um submitted mm -hmm. The belief is those will be the two that get approved. Once we have those details, then we build on those. We get that information out, we make people aware of them, you know, yeah. show them how to use them, how to access that. So, but that's going to be an increase in cost to all of us to do that. Yeah. 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 And on top of the $14 and something you're asking. Well, I mean, I think the energy efficiency rider is separate. But well, yeah, it may be separate, but it'll still be an increased cost. It will us. be an increased cost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those energy efficiency costs are socialized to all customers. Yes. That is true. So we have it on record. It's absolutely socialized. <laughs> and you have it on record. I mean, it's common knowledge. Yeah, that, yes, um, the costs are socialized. Yes. So, in terms of the committee itself, um, is it mostly just you, or do you have people? I have nobody. Okay. Uh, so we need to recruit. In other words, we need to recruit some more. I need right, and I'm I, you know, I'm in no position with the time that I have and the travel that I have to lead it. I would help someone, but okay. I'm I'm not in a place to take responsibility for it. Okay. Um, so we need to probably recruit yeah, someone new. I'm very much will help, but I can I I do not have the time to lead one. <laughs> Lauren. Lauren, James, and Tammy. <laughs> um, I'm kind of looking at you guys partly because I mean I know you're working on where energy efficiency is kind of an interest too. So maybe um, maybe the three of you could kind of talk and see who, and then we can start recruiting some more of the public for a uh, stronger energy efficiency. And that'll also help us with things like this where we can get more public input from a committee um, in the future on grants and things that we're going to want to um, go after, not just this one, but other ones. So, okay. Um, green spaces. That's you actually, because I booked out. <laughs> I'm, I'm the planning commission yeah. liaison. And honestly, our everything we do is so long-term. Our current battle is fighting developers trying to get connectivity so that people are not stuck back in a two mile cul-de-sac with no way out except by car. So, you know, someday 20 or 30 years from now, people ought to be able to actually walk and bicycle in Wichita, but it's not gonna happen fast. So that's what I'm up to. So it sounds like we kind of need to re-stand up greens. Nina was was really spearheading that one too, yeah, quite a bit she, she was, was because here. no one volunteered to do it. That's yeah. why she did it. Seemed like it was, it was on the committee. There was quite a few people at one point because like Paul was on the that committee there was quite a bit of a Jane were you on it Jane was on it yeah um so I think it it was a popular one and there's a well, Elizabeth was on it Bishop mm -hmm. um so I think that one would be a good one to get going again um if we can look at our new board member for the new park board master plan that's going to be developed next couple of years yeah, yeah. Speaking of Nina, I noticed, I tried to go to, I know she had like a SharePoint site where mm -hmm. we could find all of this information. And I tried that link last week mm -hmm. and it doesn't exist anymore because it's attached to her mm -hmm. email. Account. Her. 
Because like the link says in Rouseman slash blah 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 blah. Or green spaces specifically, or no, just for, for like we had a SharePoint of like everything, the, everything, the, yeah. any kind of documents that she sent, like the sustainability plan, and there was oh, God. other research that she had done. I and I tried to go shit. back. What's that? I haven't looked for ours. <laughs> So but I think I did maybe look and see if we could get that yeah. switched to you. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. I have most, if not all, of Nina's files um, that were shared with me. So I can see if I can find what you guys are talking about. And if not, just starting kind of like a new one that everyone has access to and hopefully oh, getting some of those old ones back in there. Mm -hmm. I had it bookmarked on my internet browser so I can send it's, you that link yeah. if that helps. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. I'll be I'm not sure that it will because I know her email, I think, is deactivated now. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it'll help with me being able to see what's in it. As far as I'm aware, she transferred everything to Penny and Penny transferred everything to me. So it's just me looking through all of her files. Okay. So hopefully it's in there. Okay. Was it a Google Doc? No, it was a SharePoint, like a- Because we did a Google Doc. It was a, um, so SharePoint's Outlook. So is that basically oh, an Outlook yeah. drive? Mm -hmm. I think ours was different. Maybe she used a different platform for us. It was Google. That's okay. I have a bookmark. Yeah. When I get my computer, yeah, I can out, take a look and see yeah. what it is. Yeah. yeah, I think if we could get a green spaces committee going again, I think that would be. I have a lot of things to do, but just... we can talk about it too. But uh, yeah. yeah, it looks seems like, like a really amazing opportunity for leverage. Because you've got developers that are going to make millions of dollars yep. and yeah. put in infrastructure mm -hmm. that then lasts for yep. three years. That's right. what and then like. yeah. they're incentivized to put it in. You know, So this is the time to have 10 apps, not just one, not just two. You know, Could they put in EV chargers? Mm -hmm. Could they put in the, you know, chart, you know, some of the infrastructure so that somebody could put in a charger later, but the infrastructure there infrastructure for solar panels. They don't have to put the solar panels in unnecessarily, but make it easy for a homeowner to do that mm -hmm. you know, later. Uh, so many little medium and big asks, and they're going to kick and scream. Oh yes, they will. Yes. They're and still they, kicking and screaming over sidewalks every inch of the way. And then anyway. they're going to brag about the fact that they did it after they're done kicking and screaming. They won't take credit and we've just given it to them, but that's happened over and over again. And then everybody's happy with a green strip through the thing that leads right to a shopping center. Mm -hmm. you know, so people could people could push a stroller to the shopping center and get things. They will get and scream, they will brag later. It's it's I think the whole I think the whole committee could really get behind, you know, putting some um in there. I I totally agree with the 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 wish. I just I will say that it depends on the developer. Some of the ones that come before the planning commission do all this stuff because they know it's it's marketable and it's a good good idea. And we have other ones that are still stuck in 1957 and just think they're being you know yelled at every time they are asked for anything. So it depends. But I will say, as a general rule, city political leaders in this town are have a long history of being unwilling to argue with developers uh -huh. about much of anything. That's right. And, and there's the whole issue of affordable housing. That's, let's not go there. Yeah, well, it's not. Instead um, of high dollar housing. We've got about three minutes before we'll go to public comment for the last five. Um, so, but I want to just, you know, kind of go through. So we've talked about three, one, two, three, yes, three of the committees. We're marketing. We need to get that going again. <laughs> We talked about putting together a PowerPoint or some kind of a yeah. It's well, and I think Michael had started it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think he has has one. So, um, especially as we're starting to, um, you know, support um, someone new coming on staff, and then also um, things like this. I think probably us having another conversation about how we're going to get the word out on these things is definitely warranted at this point. Um, those were, and then we had. Um, Water. I don't think that we have anyone working on that anymore. So we need to relook at that as well. And transportation. And transportation. Transportation, right. So 
Um, so for those of you who are new to the board, um, kind of think through maybe if there's an area of those that you would like to head and get going again so that we can start talking about more on the policy side and otherwise um, within these, these different categories. There's also one more, it's Economic Development Committee. Yeah, I think that one's dead. <laughs> I will take the blame for that one, okay. um, at least for now. Let's kind of restart that one soon. Um, okay, so let's use the last seven minutes or so for any additional public comment today. Go ahead. Uh, last weekend, I got like 15 volunteers out to like the back side of the little arc behind me down, or they're off 12. And they're uh, people for a long time from big logs. This is the biggest one I've seen. Mm -hmm. And we cleared it down. So we pulled a log like bigger than a telephone pole down towards uh, Innsbridge. Mm -hmm. And I'm just hoping that some city employee from this meeting might be able to twist an arm at uh, you know, city maintenance to potentially try and grab some of these larger uh, impediments to the flow of water through the river. Because mm -hmm. um, we moved that one by kayak. So I figure if two kayaks can get it a uh, quarter of a mile, you guys got the high dollar gear to get it off the rest of it. You know how to use the city web page to request things like that? I have city report. I use it frequently. But uh, this is a special request because it doesn't, yeah, there, there's there's things you can get done and there's things that it's like, report that 800 times. And I'm sorry, but my phone's battery does not have the live thing to deal with that system on this one. So I came here to ask because 15 yeah. people came out of the woodwork to jump in the little arc to clean it. I think the city probably can forego having to seem to do that 800 times. On the other hand, um, we also had another issue that we brought up at one of our last meetings uh, in the cleanup. And that was uh, that right now in the city spraying the poison ivy, I hope y'all are aware, uh, not using goats, touting it, right, in a big park. Uh, they're actually using a chemical, I tend to bring the MSD as time, but the MSDS that I got from one of your workers clearly states that it's toxic to fish. And like I said, I live like eight feet from it. So I'm not sure that uh, city management, city manager's office is aware of what's in the MSDS, but I can tell you the fish really don't need any more health diet. It would probably be good to stop doing that. You can use goats or you can just let the poison ivy go because, you know, it's not invasive. Don't like it, they can eat their pants. Is that along the river where they're spraying it, or where are they where are they doing it? That's the only time I asked the guy. So is there another chemical that you spray with in different like use scenarios? And he was yeah. like, Oh hell no, man. I was like, all right, bro. Thank you so much. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, so okay. that's the chemical that they use, and it's toxic to fish, I should say. Um, and uh, last but not least, we're having a Open block party on our little stretch of river that we just cleared the almost beaver dam out of. So party with the beavers, party <coughs> with the, the scent crew, and all the other fun riverside people. Uh, but yeah, if you have leaves you want composted, please bring them to us. One of our neighbors members is a, actually an employee for Nudge, mm. but we like to use the biomass back on the river where we pile up sticks between the trees to kind of get more space to grow leaves. Okay. We love that. But yeah, that's the cost of a tent to bring a bag of mulch. Uh, but yeah, everybody is invited. We want the tree to come out. <coughs> permit us. So please we'll take advantage of our hospitality. Perfect. Thank you. So would either of you like to make a last comment? Would you like to do that? Um, I just said everything I was going to say. So I went to the city budget meeting last night. There was a public input or it's the city budget. One of the issues that I mentioned was the uh, sustainability coordinator that Norman, Oklahoma, a third the size of Wichita has a full-time uh, sustainability coordinator. But I did not understand, as I said last month, the, the difference between the $100,000 for a full-time person and how that morphed into $40,000. When we had, when what I heard was clearly 
that a part-time person wasn't very effective. <laughs> so I, I'm sure that, I mean, I don't know what the board can do. They really seem to consider increasing the budget of Cowtown. <laughs> I, I don't know if they can increase the budget, but um, I still don't understand. I haven't even heard one word about a sustainability coordinator. And isn't that relevant? I did actually say it a couple times, Shane. Um, maybe before I got here. No, during this meeting. Um, so but would you say, please help me? There were a couple of times where I had said, for example, when we were talking about the energy audit, that that would be helpful to the new sustainability officer to have that information. That was- The new half-time? <laughs> Person. So, Jane, the Our everyone voted in different ways, right? On this, but the library will close it's for in two years. Minutes. And the, our hope, I think, other and others out. please weigh in on Staff this, where we voted last year, was that we would get started with the part time, but look immediately please for save all documents and complete all additional funds to get this to full time as soon as possible. And what I, what the reason I ended up personally, I'll speak for myself, only voting for that position or that particular option was James has thought that we used the last $20,000 towards hiring a grant writer to get that money faster. That was what sold me. I'm only speaking for myself, but my fear is if we use the whole $100,000 in one year and we're not able to secure funding, it dies on the vine after a year and it takes another five years or 10 years to try again. That, is, that, is my, that was my rationale and that's the only rationale I can give, but that was mine. Go ahead. So just a little addendum. It is it is a campaign season, right? I saw the the debate or the forum of mayoral candidates. It's just such a perfect question to get somebody on record to say, "How do you support <laughs> sustainability here in Wichita?" Of course, I do. Wouldn't that have been a good question? I know. I suggested it to Pilar. Oh she God. said, "I don't think I'm the one that's writing questions," so oh. she wasn't able to throw it in there for the end. I, I suggested that to remember. Yeah, I, more I know. Yeah, they don't think it's important. I testified um, in favor of the sustainability board officer. And I was wondering what question Brandon was asking, if Mayor Whipple was asking about when he said, "Oh, so you support the changes that they made?" And I was like, "I don't know. Me? Yes, I don't know the changes." So that's. I think that's really weird because I can tell you, we, we don't need to hire a grant writer. To support this effort, we have a thriving community's technical assistance center that can literally provide that support for free. Um, and if someone has full time employment, they can make the best use of that. I really feel that that is a huge misstep, and I hope that gets addressed next week. Okay, thank you. Um, um, one sec, let me adjourn the meeting first because we're over. Um, but on that note, um, I am going to go ahead and adjourn the meeting tonight. Thanks, everybody.